in that it resembled the old three Ronnie sketch of answering the question before the one presently being asked. For example, on tackle four, he would give a scrum for a high tackle, which was actually for a knock-on on tackle one. <laughs> um, That's actually more of a skill than, uh, than doing it properly. Good recall yeah, yeah, no, yeah. on the run. Yeah. Uh, Phil Nadin said, that was a hard game. Despite the score, FC had to work hard for the result. FC attacked well for a change and defended even better. Wakefield always looked dangerous in that last 20 uh, metres with quick hands and the big lads running and driving hard. I would still like to see some more backing up to the runners breaking. The ref was not at his best today. Don't usually ref bash, but he had some strange decisions both ways. Um, and then Joshua's granddad said, um, Ole, ole, ole. Albert Kelly scored one, made a couple and played for the second half with just one arm. Uh, the big trend forwards got no change from a solid defence. A few injuries look like giving selection issues next week, but we will take the points. Yes, yeah, so that was all Hull fans. I have seen some stuff uh, anecdotally on Twitter and Facebook and stuff from Wakefield fans similarly um, questioning questioning the referee. Mm-hmm. Um, so when it's everyone who's saying it, mm-hmm. I think it's fair to call into question the performance mm-hmm. rather than bash him as such. Yeah, you know everyone should be open for scrutiny, fair, balanced yeah. scrutiny. Um, Liam Moore hasn't refereed a Super League game since round six. Right, okay. Which is, to me is interesting. I'm not sure if he's had an injury, but I've seen him on the line over Easter weekend as well, I think. Right. So I'm not sure there, but yeah. that maybe there's a rustiness yeah. there that, that can be called into question. You don't know on some of the decisions, maybe he's not communicating well with his touch judges if he's going back a couple mm-hmm. of plays to change a decision yeah, that's yeah. been made it might be that he's not hearing what's coming in from the touch judges and it's hard to tell that when you're watching the games yeah. so maybe there's a problem there as well um, it's a bit it's disappointing though isn't it because Liam Moore was a referee that we all sort of saw us promising and he, and he might still be um, yeah. <laughs> but but with the lack of games this yeah, year yeah, and the yeah. criticism that's come hopefully this is it, it blowing off the cobwebs um, it's really hard for us to comment too much beyond what the guys have said yeah. so we have to kind of take it on face value that when the winning side are all everyone's mentioned the referee and yeah. not, not in a slagging him off for contributing to the result of the game the result yeah. seems fair Yeah. Um, from the highlights it's hard for us to come to say much but I would say the he was let down by his co-officials, I think, for the uh, Justin Harrow try because that looked like a, a knock-on by Mason Kate and Brown. But, yeah. but it could have been that the whole player actually yeah. touched it and not Mason Kate and Brown. Yeah. And then that would be the right decision. They were all closer than we were, but seems like his touch judge and in goal judge might have been the people who mm-hmm. could have made a better call there. The other two incidents that flashed up on the highlights that we all will have seen, as well as the Hull and Wakefield fans seeing, was. Gareth Ellis got Simbin for a high yeah. tackle on Mason Creighton Brown. Now, I can completely see why he got Simbin <laughs> for it. It was fucking horrific. <laughs> he, he decapitated it as he was coming across. Uh, wrestlers would be proud of that, <laughs> wouldn't they? But there was then a tackle in the second half on a Hull player that led to a penalty in front of the sticks mm-hmm. that didn't look hugely dissimilar. The only main thing that was dissimilar is the whole player in that instance was not running they were stumbling to the ground whereas Maiden Case and Brown was low yeah. to the ground but was running yeah. he was in sprint mode Yeah. Um, so maybe that's the only mitigation between that one not being a yellow card I don't know but it looked pretty heavy handed mm-hmm. um, and then the very last highlight on the highlights was really weird it was a penalty for Hull um, but Wakefield had broken through Oh, yeah, and then yeah, it yeah, seemed yeah. to go back and I've yeah. watched the play a few times to try and understand what they'd seen Yeah, and I had no idea Yeah. so if that's the sort of condensed version of what all the fans saw then yeah I'm sure Liam Moore will get scrutinised he might mm-hmm. have to work his way back up again Yeah. and um, and hopefully he's returned stronger from the experience and gladly it doesn't appear that he's influenced the outcome of the game mm-hmm. which is what we that's the last thing we want from our referees you know we people are allowed to be shit sometimes everyone has a shit day at the job yeah. as long as they're not 
affecting an outcome unfairly. Yeah. So hopeful. So it feels like he hasn't done that, which is good. Yeah. What What did you make from anything you saw of this one? Um. I, well, so I saw Albert Kelly's um sort of the first try was a was a like a brilliant piece of skill. Just uh, he's he's just got that that turn of pace, hasn't he? That just just breaks through. Yeah. Yeah. When he sees the nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, he's, he's he's just got that. Um, he's just got that gas, and even even when he's looking a bit a bit chunky, he can he, he can still yeah. outpace most people. Um, I think um, was uh, yeah, Jake um, did Jake Connor he did play in this, didn't he? Yeah, he, yeah. He him and Snade had that break, didn't they? That yeah, set yeah. up. Um, I think that led to that penalty. Actually, come to think of it, yeah. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I was just watching. I've watched the same highlights on the uh, as you've seen, so it, it was hard to it was hard to kind of uh, get an impression of the game. But yeah, there was there was that. I did notice that that sort of uh, strange uh, penalty at the end, and uh, and obviously Westerman getting his two tries. So obviously he's uh, X X wire. Uh, it, and uh, so I'd like to keep an eye out for uh, for Westerman. It looked like he was playing out of position in the centres yeah, from the yeah. attacking set yeah, yeah. that he came in from. He ended up quite far in on one of them, but he'd come on a good line. Yeah. Westerman is out of contract at the end of this year, and one of the players that there's been a bit of paper talk and that sort of stuff about land, landing spots and, and stuff, Hull, to me, really should be wanting to tie him down. He's yeah. one of those players who really brings a... Like a, a joined up approach to that side, they look better yeah. when he's at thirteen yeah. than when any other player is in there. They look like a team who can play some exciting attacking rugby. Yeah. When you've got, like you say, um, pacey, bursty, tricky kind of halves like Connor or Kelly, yeah, and very quick fullback Shaw or even Young Win who's mm-hmm. doing well off the back of having an extra pivot at times who's really crisp with his delivery of passes mm-hmm. like Westerman and can yeah. pass both ways yeah. I don't understand why they've not tied him down maybe his injury record the worry he didn't play a lot when he jo- rejoined him last year the, yeah I think I think that the, there was I think so, whole fans that I've spoken to questioned his character when the, when he left yeah. the first time uh, to come to us, and they were so they weren't sorry he'd left for for that reason, and uh, I don't know whether that is a, whether that's still a, in question. I'm I'm not sure, but he's a he's a quality loose forward. There aren't a lot of the, that type of loose forwards in the game, and um, and like you say, he, he does add a lot. So um, he's kind of calm, I guess he's calmed down. He's got a family now. He's put, you know, yeah. posting pictures of his family and stuff on Twitter and yeah. so on and stuff. So so I think um, uh, I think that they'd be daft not to. Uh, I, I guess the. You know, if Hull aren't buying a lot of players lately, and there's some question marks over funds and things like that, I don't know whether that's that's something that's uh, that, that, that's an issue or not. But uh, I, I'd, I think they should tie him down certainly. Uh, it looks like from the report several concussions in this game, which is a slight worry and may play into the whole fatigue situation. I, I don't I don't know, but you don't want tired players getting knocked around the head. No. Uh, yeah. um, it just all all builds into a bad situation. The Highlight moment for me. I'm I'm a bit torn. I know you talked about Kelly's try and that yeah. sort of nonchalant yeah. approach that he had to it, the, yeah. the the dummy, and then just oh I'm I'm yeah. in, and then, <laughs> and then that burst to get around the fullback. But yeah. um, I thought the hands for Max Jowett's first try, and uh, Phil alluded to the hands that that way for way of show yeah. when they did get into attacking positions, which sounds like wasn't a ton. Mm. But the hands for Max Jowett's first try, I thought were fantastic. Yeah, the little tip ons inside outside yeah, yeah, to get him yeah. into space. Um, it was really hard for the whole defence to cover that so, so I'd, I'd probably go with that one I'm picking a lot of losing tries <laughs> aren't I here um, let's, let's move on to the other side of Hull uh, as the Rovers visited Leeds and this was another one that looked to be done and dusted yes. at half time yeah. it was a 22-0 to the Rhinos at half time but they, they finished with a narrow and nervy 28-24 win in front of 11,694 James Child was the man controlling this one in the middle um, why don't you read the stats out this one have you got them on this one no you've not no. so you can't <laughs> right I can't make them up I had to do them at lunchtime some yeah. of these. Leeds <laughs> made more metres at a huge 2.5 metres per carry better average gain and had six more um, tackle but no that, that's meant to say clean breaks despite having fewer carries they also had a 4.4% better team tackle success rate however with four more errors they still gave the Robins a sniff in the second half it looks like for all their dominance they do have some worries at the back end of game still. Individually, Harry Newman, uh, 233 metres from wow. the young centre. 
so a uh, good effort from him Jack Walker one try seven tackle bus 152 metres two clean breaks Ash Hanley two tries five tackle bus 139 metres two clean breaks Matt Parcell one try one try assist seven tackle bus 125 metres two clean breaks for the losing um, Robin side, Craig Hall had 148 metres and two clean breaks. He's sort of getting more accustomed to being in that fullback role now. Rob Mulhern, 49 tackles, 10 of which were marker tackles. Kane Linnett, uh, try and 142 metres for him. And Junior Vivi, 126 metres. Cool. Uh, right. So Tom Andrew said. Uh, so we just played part of the second half this week instead of just the first. <laughs> just before slash after half time killed us off. Was working this week, so I had to listen on the radio, but sounding same old shit. Piss poor defence, making poor players look great. Don't know where a win is coming from at this stage. Don't agree with the Sheen's out brigade. He doesn't slip off tackles and drop the balls. Onwards to Saints. Culp. Uh, Josh says squeaky bum time in the second half we are consistent in letting games go in the second half a good clinical first and was going to be run away with game but Hull KR pulled their finger out and drove us to the end with two great try saving tackles forcing Newman out in the second half we should make Merrion captain more injuries adding up which is a worry finally welcome KR to the shit end of the table the home of the Rhino <laughs> Uh, Dr. Bob said, bloody hell Leeds, that was a model of second half collapse. I know injuries, um, sorry, I know injuries and that's not good for next week, but even so, resilience, training required. Yeah, look, in-game injuries, I've always said, are more of a challenge to teams than yeah. pre-game injuries. But it's hard to see which players actually got injured for Leeds because it's not in the, the write-up doesn't, for this game doesn't actually... I think Dwyer went off tell us, but Dwyer appears to be one of them. Yeah. I think Jack Walker in, later in the second half was maybe one of them as well. Um, although I'm sure there was some people, you know, on the other side as well who picked up knocks. Mm-hmm. Um, Shoddy Mungo said, hashtag KR in crisis, then back to hashtag Leeds in crisis with a final result that suggests both are still true. <laughs> uh, Paige said, another weekend in rugby league and some things just never change. Rovers are still shite. Not sure if Rovers know it's an 80-minute game. It's In all seriousness, though, starting to dread going back home when Rovers lose. Not sure how much more Tom can take. Think I might just sit quietly in the corner while he sits and reflects what a shit team he supports. <laughs> Smiley face. <laughs> uh, and Dom Andrews, weird. Uh, Dom Andrews said... Ro- this is a, a double parody the rare <laughs> double parody Dom Andrews says Rovers hook up with Disney didn't go to plan as playing princesses in the first half backfired and we had to get the villains on in the second stanza here's hoping London keep their run of losses going uh, uh, do you know who should have got in touch Dom Hodgson yeah yeah this uh, anyway. he was there as well exactly uh. <laughs> anyway what, what what did you take from this one if anything um, well first half um from the highlights Dwyer again ex-Wire so I like to keep an eye on him yeah. um, that absolutely amazing break um, and, uh, and, the, and the sort of try that came from that and then and then Parcel doing exactly the same thing so obviously uh, you know obviously he's had a bit of a a, a rocket in, in the Dwyer's coming and, and really yeah 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 and, uh, and then you, you saw him get his opportunity probably I assume on the back of Dwyer's injury and um, and and he he like burst through. He had a uh, he scored a try for like bursting through, and also I think he set one up as well. I'm um, pretty sure. I feel like he did. Pass that. Pass out, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 I yeah. picked out my highlight moments as the first try and the last try of that first half for yeah. Leeds, and they are they were almost cut from the same cloth, yeah, weren't yeah, they? Yeah. Dwyer making the break for the first one, so a quick hook, hooker out yeah. of dummy half hits a gap and then finds a pacey outside back and that occasion it was Handley out wide yeah. on the second occasion it was Parcel who made the break and he sort of managed to snake back inside and find Jack Walker supporting yeah. both those two tries were exactly what Leeds would want wouldn't they that's yeah. why they have yeah. those quick hookers to take advantage of quick play of the balls with a defence on the back heel on the back you know on the heels and yeah. then you know young kids and it's what Parcel was doing consistently in the year that they won the title a few, a few years back so uh, exactly yeah. yeah and I think both hookers looked like really incisive for Leeds didn't they if they made yeah. the, the, the couple of star men that stood out for the Rhinos in this yeah. one uh, Lola Hayard actually did something good in this game he um, sort, of, sort of moved around to the right and passed the ball out uh, 
Do you know Lola Hay has got about eleven or twelve <laughs> tries since this season? Yeah. Uh, the stat I'm not fully up on the stats anymore because of the website not showing me everything all the time. I've not quite kept my spreadsheets up to date, but uh, to my knowledge, he's got about, I think, 11 try assists. Yeah. So all the people bagging him, rightly because he's very inconsistent displays, yeah. he is contributing. Yeah. Uh, it's very weird. Yeah. Um, kind of like my last year, yeah, 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 totally yeah. bagged, yeah. but actually led the league in try assists for most of yeah. the campaign. But yeah, really interesting, that one. Uh, good good spot. Yeah. Good spot. Yeah, so, but... but- 